Hello everyone and welcome to our next lecture of software design and architecture. As we started from requirement analysis and traveling towards design, we have created and looked upon a number of artifacts and UML diagrams. But before we move any further, it's time that we learn a technique for arranging and logically structuring what we have created so far. So for that purpose, we are going to create a logical architecture and we are going to learn the UML package diagrams. So we will see that what is the requirement to design iteratively, what is a logical architecture, how and when to create the UML package diagram and how we can layer our design and using some of the architectures for example the model view separation principle how we can arrange the things in a better way so by now we have covered the domain model we have covered the system model but one thing that we must remember is the agile principles and agile principles say that the models can always be improved and we must prioritize the aspects of the system and in each iteration while we iterate and improve in each iteration we must decide which task is more important and after prioritization we can partially and gradually grow our system so while we are working with the diagrams and modeling and design thing there are various approaches to the diagrams. One of the approaches is the Agile approach, which says that diagrams are simply a sketch. It says accurate diagrams are not as important as advancing, which means that you should just simply create very minimalistic diagrams and design and focus on code and focus on progressing. Whereas another aspect, another approach is in contrast to that, which says it's model driven engineering so the model driven engineering says that diagram must be perfect that means you must take care and you must make sure that your diagrams are very detailed so that while you're generating or when when there is time to generate the code it is easy for you one thing that you must keep in mind is the case tools computer aided software engineering tools and here i would like to mention that all the models and diagrams that we are going to create in this course should be made using some computer aided software engineering tool so you can use some free available tools or any tool of your choice that you think is easy and available so either you're working with model driven engineering or you're following agile these tools will be very helpful for you some other alternatives can be split modeling which means that you can model in parallel. You can keep on modeling and developing in parallel. So one of the possible alternative could be that we follow Agile, but we try to introduce model driven engineering at some portions of the diagrams. For example, we can say a particular diagram or a particular portion is important so we will be spending more time and making it more detailed so that while generating the code it will be easy for you whereas for the other parts we can make it agile so the combinations are quite possible when we are doing the requirements and object oriented analysis we focus on doing the right thing that means we focus that we do not get the wrong requirement so we know exactly what to do and when we are working with the design we are focusing on doing the thing right that means we are focusing on that whatever is to be done should be done correctly so if our design is not correct then we are going to result into wrong output as we know that iterative and evolutionary methods embrace change that means they can cope with the change in the later stages although we try to provoke that inevitable change in early iterations so we make sure that the inevitable and large changes should be done in the early iterations so early programming tests and demos help provoke the changes early so if there is any change which 
is supposed to be a major change can be seen and provoked early if we program test and demonstrate with the help of prototypes maybe the logical architecture is always influenced by the constraints and non-functional requirements which are captured in the supplementary specifications so these supplementary specifications provide input to the package diagrams of the logical architecture and one more thing that we must notice is that the package diagrams actually provide the static view whereas if we talk about the interaction diagrams they provide us the dynamic view and similarly the class diagrams also provide us the static view of the system so with the help of the package diagram we can present and implement our logical architecture let's understand that further so the logical architecture is actually a large scale organization of the software classes into packages or namespaces or into subsystems and layers so we are actually talking about organization so when we are talking about organization we are going to take help from the layers or we are going to create sub modules or packages and finally we are going to have a better representation of the overall thing a layer is a very coarse grained grouping of classes packages or subsystems so a layer will actually be composed of some some packages or or subsystems but one important thing that we must notice here is that the layer must have cohesive responsibility classes so all the packages and subsystems that you you are going to place in a layer must have a cohesive responsibility when we are talking about cohesion or cohesive responsibility that means all of these packages or subsystems are actually related to each other they are closely related in terms of their purpose and functionality so when we are organizing the layers uh, we make sure that the higher layers for example the ui layers they call upon the services of the lower layers so the lower layers are going to provide the services to the higher layers but normally it is not going to be the opposite case which means that the upper layers are not going to provide the services to the lower layers rather the lower layers are going to be used by the upper layers so typically layers in in, in any object oriented system may include a user interface layer an application logic and domain objects and technical services layer and of course this is not an exhaustive list so you may have some other layers included but some typical type of layers include the ui layer the business logic layer and then some technical services layers and then we can also have scenarios where we can have strict versus relaxed architecture so in case of strict layered architecture that means that we are not going to interact from the lower layers to the higher layers whereas if we are having a relaxed layer architecture we may have the opposite case one possible arrangement for showing the layers using the uml package diagram notation is where i have the ui layer which is interacting with the domain layer and this domain layer is further interacting with the technical services layer now here again one thing is very obvious that this interaction is only one directional so the higher layer which is the ui layer is interacting with the domain layer and this domain layer is then further interacting with the technical services layer which means that this communication is one directional and inside these layer we have several packages where each package for example the web package may directly be communicating with the logging package in the technical services layer so it's also possible that the higher layers are simply bypassing the layer immediately after it and communicating to the layers after that so for that purpose we can apply the uml here and uml package diagrams to be specific can be used for illustrating the logical architecture of the system so a layer can be modeled 
as a UML package. For example, the UI layer, which is modeled as the package named UI in the previous slide. Uh, a UML package exactly uh, can group anything. For example, it can group classes, it can group other packages, it can have use cases and so on. So a package can contain anything that you want. Uh, a UML package is a more general concept than uh, a simple concept like we used uh, in, in the Java programming language called as Java package or in .NET we use the concept of namespaces. Of course, these are the logical boundaries provided to the code. But again, UML package is a, is a more general concept than the concept that we used to see in the programming. Uh, it is common to uh, want to show the dependency, for example, the coupling between the packages so that the developers can see the large scale coupling in the system. So to show the coupling, we can use the dependency line. So in the previous slide that the line, the dotted line that you see, the dashed arrow was actually used to show the dependencies of the packages. So for that matter, the line which you are actually drawing the the arrow is pointing actually towards the depended on package so it means that the package which is pointing towards another package is using that package is depending on that package we also have some alternate uml approaches which show the package nesting uh, using the embedded packages uh, we can use the fully qualified names and we can also have the crisscross symbol so here in this case this ua package which contains two sub packages is actually uh, depending upon the this dependency line is drawn towards this sales package so it is actually depending upon this sales package one more uh, possible representation could be where we are drawing the packages with the with the lines and another representation could be using the crisscross lines so these are several different types of representations which we can use uh, you can call them different notations but all of them serve the same purpose so i have mentioned those guidelines somehow previously but uh, let's let's just read them out once again so it is recommended that you actually uh, the the structuring of your packages or the layers is is in some discrete layers form uh, where every layer is is distinct and it is having some res related responsibilities which means that it is cohesive and the lower layers are low level and general services whereas the higher layers are more application specific and one other important thing is that the collaboration and coupling should be from top to down which means the layers which are at the top level are using or are dependent on the layers which are at the lower levels so it means that the coupling is from higher to lower layers instead of lower to higher layers so you must avoid the coupling from lower to higher layers.